Jerry at Fair Oaks. Boy, is this going to be fun. I've never been on anything like this before, Lee. Have you? Mm-hmm, once, a long time ago. But then it was just small teams, maybe five or six on a side. And we didn't have a big place like this to hunt around in, either. I wonder where they'll put the treasure. Probably in some place no one would think of looking for it. Maybe up as far as General Ben's place. General Ben? Who's General Ben? Well, you know him. He's the old soldier I told you all about. Oh, but I didn't know his name before. You didn't mention it. I thought I did. Yeah, his name is Benjamin Franklin Dent. Everybody calls him General Ben. Was he a real general? Nobody knows. First time I ever saw him, he was in town. He out on a Spanish-American war tunic and a lot of medals. And maybe he is a real general. Maybe. I know that when he goes into any of the stores in Fair Oaks, he gives commands as though he owns the whole town. You know, the funny part of the whole thing is that when he does talk, everybody jumps. Mac was telling me one time that old General Ben fought in three or four wars. Gee, that many? Well, he must have been in the Spanish-American War... And Max said that he was in the Philippines and some of the Indian Wars. Well, that's three wars right there. Boy, I'll bet he sure could tell some stories if he wanted to. Yeah. I heard Major Davis say once that General Ben has stuff in his cabin that a museum would like to own. What kind of stuff? Oh, Philippine mahogany carvings, rugs from all over the world, ivory statuettes, things like that. He picked them up from all over the world. Gee, I'd give anything to see all that stuff. No chance of that. Old General Ben keeps pretty much to himself. Well, what's the good of having all that swell stuff if nobody can look at it? I guess he gets a kick out of it himself. Some people do, you know. Just like to look at them. Uh-huh. Say, isn't all that stuff pretty valuable? Worth a lot of money? Must be if museums would like to have them. I heard Major Davis say that the rugs alone, that is, some of them, are over 100 years old. <whistles> Must be pretty well worn out. <laughs> Who'd want them? Well, the older stuff like that gets, the more valuable it gets. Didn't you ever hear of a collector paying thousands of dollars for an old ring or a little statue? Uh-huh. I guess General Ben doesn't realize he's got a lot of money after all. Mm, I don't know. From what I've heard of the old fella, he's pretty smart. Nobody can pull the wool over his eyes. I guess not. Well, there's Craig Field. Mm-hmm, yeah. Uh, we're on the running track now. Yep. <laughs> Gee, everybody in school turned out for this. Mm, everybody but poor Red. Yeah, I, I felt kind of sorry for him last night. So did I. I'd be sure laid it on thick. Yeah, getting back at Red for all the nasty cracks Red made at him. Yeah, and for the time Red made him get under the shower with his uniform on. Say, what do you suppose Red meant by saying that he was going to do something about it? Mm, I don't know. Guess he was just letting off steam. Like you did when you said you were going to ride Splendor or nobody else would. Mr. Phillips, if you don't mind, I don't like to be reminded of that unpleasant episode in the <laughs> life of Jerry Dugan Esquire. <laughs> okay, Jerry. Hey, we better get a move on. The rest of the fellas are lining up. Uh-huh, come on. Oh, the evening was perfect, and now look. <laughs> Hi, Tubby. <laughs> Hi, fellas. Well, all ready for the treasure hunt? Yep. How about you? Sure. Look it. What you got there? Well, if any of you guys are lucky to be on the same squad with me, you won't get hungry. Holy smoky. He's got sandwiches stuffed in those pockets. <laughs> Good night, Tubby. You know what happens if you get caught with those. Listen, I'm not going to be caught out on the lake shore with nothing to eat. No telling how long this hunt might go on. <laughs> okay, okay, come on, you're holding us up. Forward, march! One, two, three, four, <laughs> one, two, three. Boy, there sure has been a lot going on out here. You ought to see the envelopes Cap Carl Lockhart got from Captain Bogart. What's in them? 
Well, I don't know. Instructions, I guess. Hey, I've got a hunch that they're really going to make this hunt pretty tough. I should worry. I brought along my lunch. Hey, there's Captain Lockhart now. He's our team captain, Lee. Mm, yeah, I know. Myron Radford's captaining the other team. Say, I hope we're on the same squad. Oh, there'll be more than three fellas on a squad. Yeah, should be. I guess about four or five. That'll make it about right. <laughs> Gee, Captain Lockhart has really loaded down with envelopes. Looks like we're really going to have to work to get that treasure. Yeah, I wonder what it is. <laughs> well, don't worry about that until you get to it. Just remember, there's another team out here that'll do everything it can to stop our team from getting to the treasure first. All right, hurry it up, you men. We haven't got all night. Come on, step on it. I can see where I'm going to have trouble all night. If you guys are walking away with me this early in the game, <laughs> I see where I'll end up just taking a walk all by myself. Hold it, will ya? That'd be if your legs could only match your appetite. <laughs> Whew. Well, I'm glad we're off those cinders. Mm, what would you do if you had to run the quarter mile on them? I'd dress for them. <laughs> Boy, I worked up an appetite. All right, you men, line up there. All those on the gold team line up at the south end of the field. Come on, come on, snap it up. South end. Well, we're right here now. We don't have to go any farther. That's welcome news to these ears. I'm going to rest. Cadet Young, off the ground, get up. <laughs> yes, sir. I almost had a rest. <laughs> no resting for you tonight, Tubby. I'm beginning to see that. <laughs> Gee, we've got a big team. Mm-hmm, the whole school's out for this. And when you divide a big school like Fair Oaks in half, well, you've got two pretty good-sized teams. All right, men. Stay shut. That's Captain Bogart. Mm -hmm. Quiet there. All right. I'm going to give you your instructions. Captain Gardner is giving the blue team its instructions. Pay attention now, because no excuse will be accepted later. Each team will be divided off into squads, as you know. Each squad will have a corporal appointed for the night by your team captain, Captain Lockhart. Each member of the gold team will wear one of these gold armbands to be distributed immediately. Fasten the armband on your left arm. <laughs> Debbie's going to have trouble with that. He can't tell his left foot from his right foot and drill. I took care of that for tonight. I got a string tied to my left arm. <laughs> it's on your right arm now. I know it. That's to remind me to fasten it on my left later. Oh. oh. <laughs> I've given the armbands to Cadet Sergeant Conrad, who will distribute them while I'm giving the rest of the instructions. Pay attention now. Each squad corporal will be given an envelope containing clues. Clues as to the whereabouts of the first place you must look to find a hint leading to the second clue. There are six clues in all. The final clue leading directly to the treasure. I needn't tell you the boundaries because the clues, if you figure them out and follow them correctly, will keep you well within bounds. In just a moment. At ease. <laughs> Boy, is this going to be fun. Well, I'll say. Hey, here's your armband. They're passing them down the line. Yeah, thanks. Thank you, sir. And you'll notice that I'm fastening it on my left arm. <laughs> right for once, Tubby. Now, why can't you do that in drill? We wouldn't have to spend so much time with the dummy squad. I like the dummy squad. I meet a nice class of cadets. All right. <laughs> yeah, good. Now, one final word before your team captain passes among you and appoints squads and corporals. If any member of a team is captured by one of the opposing team... The captured cadet must return to the gymnasium. He is out of the game and may take no further part in it. If you capture a man of the blue team, take his armband and keep it. Now, uh, if I were you, I'd decide upon a route to take. This game requires sharp wits. Luck has no part in it. Just skill and brains. All right, men, that's all. Captain Lockhart, take over. Yes, sir. First squad, Cadet Stugan, Phillips, Young, and Morley. Cadet Phillips? Yes, sir. You'll be corporal of the first squad. Here are the instructions. You're not to open them until the whistle is blown for the start of the hunt. After it blows, each squad will be on its own. Avoid capture and get to the clues as quickly as possible. And remember, every squad on the other team will be trying to get there first. Listen, fellas, let's get in there and win. How about it? Leave it to us, sir. Okay, Tubby, I'll leave it to you. Second squad, Ken, Wallace. Why, well, you wonder Lander, what the first clue is. You can bet your life it won't be easy. Captain Bogart said it would take brains. <laughs> Getting cold feet about it, Tubby? Who? Me? Cold feet? Listen! Hide down, not so much noise. Oh, we're sorry, Corporal Phillips. 
Tubby snapped attention there. Give Corporal Phillips a 45-degree angle salute. I'm all out of 40-degree angles. Will you settle for a 40-degree, Corporal Phillips? <laughs> you can owe me the other five. <laughs> so you're going to give me trouble, are you, Cadet Dugan? No, sir. I was merely giving you the respect due a Corporal. <laughs> hey, can I get in on this? Oh, hello, Tom. You know Jerry, don't you? Sure. Hiya, Jerry. Hiya, Mr. Morley. Uh, you met our Corporal, haven't you? Sure. Uh, greetings, Corporal Phillips. <laughs> well, our whole squad is here now. Can't we start? Mm -hmm. We have to wait for the whistle. Well, they ought to blow it in a minute. The squads are about lined up. Uh, Captain Lockhart's way down the other end. Yeah. Hey, listen. When the whistle blows, we'll run off the field, cut around the tennis courts, and read our instructions in that clump of trees and bushes just to the right of the courts. Well, uh, how about the other team? Uh, the blue team? Oh, well, they'll stay down at the north end. We'll be all right over there, where I said. There she blows! Come on, squad. Yes, sir, Corporal Phillips. Come on, let's make for the tennis court. Hot dog, we're out. Come on, Tubby. I'm gonna have trouble all night. I can see that. <laughs> Looks like he had the right idea, Lee. No one else is making for the court. Yeah, we'll be there in a second. Here, this way. We'll come over this way. Come on, there are the trees. Hey, I've lost five pounds already. What do you want me to carry you? Don't be sarcastic, Tom Morley. Okay, coast is clear. Here we are. Yeah. Come on now, let's get together and open that envelope. Hey, Tubby, take a look around and see if we're alone. Not a soul in sight. Okay, stay out there where you can see. We'll talk loud enough for you to hear. Now. What's it say, Lee? Where's the first clue? Let's see. Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute, listen to this. Twixt the name of Indian Brave and the peak of San Juan's Hill lies the clue which you will save to bring you nearer treasure's till. Well, what's that mean? Hmm. It's all Greek to me. Indian Brave, San Juan Hill. I... Hey, I think I've got something. Yeah? What is it, Tom? Well, Indian Brave? What's an Indian Brave's name we know? Hiawatha. Sure, Tom, that's well. Lake Hiawatha. Great. Now, let's see. Twixt means between. So the clue's between Lake Hiawatha and San Juan's Hill. Gosh, I don't know of any hill by that name around here. Neither do I. Whoa, 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 I got it. San Juan Hill. Lee, Tom, San, San Juan Hill was famous in the Spanish-American War. And who was in the Spanish-American War around here? General Ben. Yeah. Shh, not so loud. That must be it, though. Okay, between Lake Hiawatha and the old fellow's cabin. Sure. And his cabin sits on a little hill, so the first clue is between there and the lake. Yeah, but his cabin lies about 100 yards from the lake. That's okay, Lee. It's probably a big clue. We'll be able to spot it easily. The later clues get harder. Okay, let's go. We're wasting time. Hey, Tubby, come on. Hey, did you figure it out? I couldn't quite hear. Sure. The first clue is between old General Ben's cabin and the lake. Way up there? Well, you didn't think they were going to put it right under our noses, did you? No, but that place. Gee, that's the spookiest place around here. Ha, ha, ha. 